All righty. Good afternoon, everybody. We're back. It feels like, God, it's been so long. Um, got Justin and Michael with me. So it's 99% my fault here. Um, we missed a Thursday with the Ravens. The ravens Bengals game was a Thursday night. We missed that. And then I don't know what the heck happened to me, but I ended up very sick. I feel much better now, but this was just ended up missing um, was in the hospital. Then the following week, I wasn't feeling great. So I'm glad you guys are still with me. We've still been doing some picks. And ironically, last week, you both won um, every bet that we gave out. <laughs> that was nice. Um, let's get right into it for today. We want to go through all the games. But, yeah, I'm glad you guys are back. How are you guys doing? Justin, Michael? Okay. Yeah, gl glad to be back. Yeah, glad you're feeling well. And it's crazy. As the last time we did this was well, that was before the ravens Bengals game. Yeah, it's it's like oh, month. Month. we yeah. got things out there. But, yeah, I'm, I'm happy you guys are back. We're getting – it's actually – I don't know, somewhat beneficial to take a few weeks off here. This season so yeah, long. Yeah, now we're, now we're back for the stretch run. <laughs> exactly. We got five games left. So the Cardinals and uh, the Commanders are the only two teams not playing this week, which nobody cares anyway. So we got 15 games, 13 on Sunday. And then, again, I have no idea, but they got both Monday night games at the same time. I don't know. I've never seen that why, before besides, why? like, yeah, week one maybe they used yeah. to do that. But stagger it, not at the same time. So it's very weird. So yeah, we're gonna thanks. skip the we're gonna skip those two games. It's big favorites, Packers and Titans, which means guarantee you one of them won't cover. Don't know which one, but that just will be Monday night for you. Let's go through all the games. Uh, Michael was saying earlier, like all these totals are so low, it defines like a 50-50 game. Like when the total is that low, unless you have a really strong opinion, it's like the Army Navy game today. It's like it's hard. <laughs> Um, when these totals are so low to feel strong about it. But let's go through it and see if there's any games that jump out at you. Let's start with the Browns and the Jaguars. The Flacco's favored. I, it feels like that shouldn't necessarily be. The, I know there's no way Justin's taking the Browns. So go ahead. Tell me why you're taking the Jags plus three, right? Well, it, I mean, Lawrence is still questionable. He'd say like. No, he's not playing, right? So I, I heard he's, they said he's 50-50 on the radio, uh, but whatever. I, yeah, he's probably not playing. Oh, he's um, I this is a total stay away game for me. I have no idea honestly who I'd like. I think Eileen Jackson will just get in three against Cleveland. Doesn't have a good offense. That's really all I have. Right, Michael. That's the off chance Lawrence plays. You, if you block in plus three, then you get extra points. We have to pick each game for better or worse, so <laughs> we do have to think about it. Um, I actually I mean, will take playoff teams. So yeah, no, maybe somehow. maybe. <laughs> well, without Lawrence, at, at yeah. least. Potential playoff teams. So Jacksonville, I'll t I like the Jags getting three just because if um, C.J. Beathard is getting the start, he gets all week to prepare. He'll be much better than he was in that last drive kind of thrown in there. So, yeah, give me Jags. I, I just think that you don't give the points with Flacco right this second. I, don't, I just want to trust it. But, yeah, it's a hard, hard game to bet there. Next one, the Lions and the Bears is the most um, – hey, did they mess up the line here? Like, why are the Lions only favored by three and a half? But then I thought about it, and it's like the Bears really had them a few weeks mm -hmm. ago in Detroit. Um, what do we think here, Mike? I'm, yeah, I'm um, I'm in agreement, at least with the line movement. It opened like five. I think got down to three and a half now. Um, yeah. I love the Bears. I think they're live on the, on the money line. They had them beat in Detroit, to your point, a month ago. And Chicago, at some point in the year, they made some trades. Their defense has gotten a lot better, especially against the run. Um, and, you know, Fields is kind of getting back and up to it. So I think they're very live at home. Do you agree with that? Or you love the Lions, don't you, usually, Justin? I really switch off. I, I don't it's a week to week league, so you can love, love one team one week and then be like, you know what, I'm gonna kind of fade them. I've done that a couple of times. Um, divisional game, home team getting some points. That's that's the way I lean too. It is interesting on the spread. It's down to three. I see. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Chicago's defense is playing well, like Michael was saying, and they, they got a little mojo going. Um, so yeah, I would lead in plus three as well. Panthers Saints. Saints are minus five and a half. Saints have got to be with the most frustrating team to bet on. Exactly. <laughs> um, are the Panthers, I don't know, are we done with them? I've heard a few people say that this is a week that the Panthers actually, so the Panthers played them pretty tight to start the season. It was so, like 20 to 17. What do you think, Justin? Yeah, I, and there's a couple other things. So Winston's starting. Apparently Winston's numbers against the Panthers have been really bad. Like Wait, two James touchdowns, Winston's 11 started? turnovers. James Winston started? Yeah, Carr's going to be out. Carr's hurt. Concussion. 
I'm betting every dollar. I love Jameis Winston. I'm putting them in the team. That's my favorite guy right there. I, I thought he should have been the starter to begin with. You're yeah, about to tell I mean, me a good, about terrible numbers. It's a good game. backup to have. But, uh, no, the Saints, maybe that'll this will spark their offense. They've just been stuck in the mud. No Wait, divisional I'm, game. Carolina's were, trying to play with something to prove. I'm, I'm taking plus six. For sure. were, you, were you saying that Winston's numbers against the Panthers, I cut you off, are they bad? They're bad. They're really bad. For whatever that's worth, I mean, that hasn't been the last couple of years. But when he was on Tampa, uh, just just some tidbits that they're out. That's what I heard. He's been really bad career against Carolina. Mike, are we a Jameis? Are you a Jameis Winston uh, fan? What are you? I think Jameis is very fun. He's very volatile. You know, he can go four touchdowns, four hundred yards. He can go four interceptions, <laughs> so you you can you get it all. It's it's um, and it, to your point though, I don't think it's a big um downgrade point spread wise maybe a couple points just cut because of the p- turnover potential but i will say i was on carolina last week um just because they just fired their coach and usually the team kind of gets up that's when you get their best effort it's like well there's no one else to blame now like let's show them kind of type of thing and they couldn't even get past tampa who was really injured they kind of got lucky with a back door to even get Definitely. close to covering you know because i bet them and i was following that game i was like how are you down two scores late when they, so anyway, Carolina just might be if they didn't bounce off of that. I don't think they're bouncing ever again. Um, I know the Saints are terrible, but I, if I have to pick it, I'm taking the Saints. I think Derek Carr is just terrible. I, I I love the Saints. I honestly had no idea James Winston was starting. I like Taysom Hill. <laughs> I like that Derek Carr is a vibe killer. Like he, I feel like he's not liked. I feel like he just makes the wrong. He thinks he's better than he is, and he drives me insane because he just has these. I'm. Um, no, I love. I want to say, yeah, this is not going out on the limb, but I feel like Saints minus six or Carolina money line, right? You either get good Jameis or bad Jameis. Okay, <laughs> I like yeah, it. The, the Saints' coaching has also been really bad. They they don't really know how to run an offense, but yeah, we can see. Go on. The, the, those are all fair points. Dennis Allen, I he must know people because he is. Yeah, awesome. I don't get it. And he's supposed to be a def- defensive coach. And they were a good to start. Now they can't play defense either. It, I'm down on the Saints. Bucks Falcons. Um, we'll we'll transition right into that. Uh, Michael, you start because you just you said you. Um, yeah, called the Bucks. Yeah. Atlanta was my you know preseason darling of win totals and all these futures that look dead, but because the division is so bad, at least has has some life here. The matchup. I mean, Atlanta just runs the ball way too much. Tampa's got a pretty good defense. Um, I'm going to take Atlanta money line. You know, it's under a field goal, but I hate the game. It's n- there's, I have nothing to add, really. Just like, <laughs> sorry. This one is it's mostly just a gut feeling for me. Uh, I, I just, I don't like picking Atlanta, even though I did last week, just because of playing the Jets. I'm taking any points I can in this matchup. Uh, this could be a game that Baker Mayfield makes some plays. Uh, Mike Evans doing something. Atlanta's offense. There's nothing dynamic about it. I'm leaning Tampa Bay. I feel like I usually lean the, lean the underdogs, but that's what I like. Tampa tease if it's over yep, seven. I, I did that. That's, I that's got to it. it's got to be a play. I got to throw that out there. I'm not yeah. sure if you remember the first time they played. The Falcons basically horrible had game, run, and then you see Ritter fumble the ball in the end zone for a touchback, and then he follows it up with like a dime to Drake London at the end of the game that somehow turned into like a 40 yard gain, and then Baker is coming back down the field, and I'm like, oh, Baker will pull it off. He throws an interception, and I just you can't bet this game. Like Honestly, if you, it's it's a mediocrity game. That's like, the winner, winner that, that division is lower than that. So the Colts yeah. Bengals, the next game is uh, probably the opposite of these past two. Like, this is just a fun game. I think you're going to very highly competitive. It's basically a playoff game. Um, now there's tape on Browning. We'll see if that makes a difference. Uh, Steichen for the Colts is doing an amazing, I mean, like an amazing, amazing job. I He freaking beat me last week with the Titans. Well, the Titans decided to beat themselves by getting two punts blocked. And anyway, um, that's great. I just keep telling people to take the Titans. And anyway, um, so Colts, I thought the line, I thought the Colts would be favored, but they're not. They Um, were to start. They were to start, but right now we got Bengals minus one and a half. Um, Short week for the Bengals. What do we think? Uh, Justin, you go first. I hate to keep saying that the toss up game, I lean one way, but. All these, as you can tell with the small spreads, all these games are like point off. Uh, since he kind of rode the ship last week, Browning looked really good against Jacksonville compared to looking really bad against Pittsburgh. So you kind of don't know what you're going to get. The Colts, 
seemed to be lucky to win that game last week with the two block punts. I don't know what to think of them a lot of times. They can score, but then Minshew can struggle sometimes. Our defense looks pretty bad. I'm Taylor's still t- taking a coin and flipping it. I lean Cincinnati. Yeah, and Taylor's still out. Michael, what do you think, though? Yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of Indy. Just have been all year backing them. To your point, Ryan, Steichen is just – he was that engine that made Philadelphia so dominant last year. Um, to me, you get Cincinnati off of a double-digit underdog win on a short week. Everyone's kind of falling in love with Browning. I think it's a great opportunity to, to fade Cincinnati. I love the Colts. I think it's a feeling on this game. Um, if you're betting on this game, I think it's a bet on Joe Mixon one way or the other because the only way the Bengals win is to keep them off the field. And the Colts are susceptible. Like the Titans did run all over them um, last week and then Henry got hurt. The backup ran well, Spears. So to me, it's a Joe Mixon game. And it, it's it's like up and down with his relationship ever since that Super Bowl when they didn't let him in on the last play of the game. And then um, there's a couple of weeks. It's weird. He, there's like a weird vibe with him in that uh, organization. So I think if you're handicapping that game, it starts with, do you think the Bengals can run the football? Let's go to the next game, which is, I don't think you're going to find anybody. And I, I mean, if you like, who's going to take the jets in this, right? So the Texans, but then again, it should be minus six if no one's going to. So Vegas sets the odds, right? I'm not going to go on a long lecture here, but they're trying to get 50-50 when they come up with the odds. They had it at four and a half, which seemed like, okay. And then some people jumped on the, the Jets. Is it um, – Is there and make an argument if you could for the Jets. Can one of you do it? Because I can. I can. All right, go for it. Go for it, Mike. Yeah, I mean, for starters, I, I haven't checked it recently, but earlier in the week they're calling for a really – kind of bad weather forecast on the entire East Coast. So definitely right. something to consider for any and every game, New York, Baltimore, kind of where, wherever that is. So heavy wind, heavy rain, um, you know, just very hard to throw the ball, get the world wind swirling down there. Um, and the Jets, the Jets defense is just playing at such an elite level. Um, you just don't know it because their offense is playing at the exact opposite of that. Um, it's really strange what's going on with the quarterbacks, but you have to admit that Wilson is, thousand percent an upgrade from Boyle and the other guys that they've thrown out there um, and this Houston team is very good they're young they're learning how to win but for them to cover over a field goal on the road in the cold a dome team going out there it's mm-hmm. just not a cupcake when 79 percent of the people are, are betting Houston anyway you know sports sports books are not dumb Justin can you argue with that or are you just like the Jets suck so I'm taking the Texans regardless the latter, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> so you made a lot of good points. I mean, so, sometimes I tried. There's there's games that you like want to outthink yourself, and for this one, I'm just not. I don't think I'll take the Jets again the rest of this year. Although Patriots kind of proved that a little wrong. Like I wasn't ever going to touch them, and then they get them getting six points against the Steelers. I thought was pretty. pretty the reason awesome. that, um, but back to the Jets. Yeah, I don't even think going back to Wilson's even going to help. There's a lot of uh, internal drama. It seems with the Jets, they got. So much stuff going on with their quarterback, and the coach kind of doesn't know what to do with it. Um, I'm taking Houston. Houston's in the playoff hunt. The Jets are a bad team. Uh, I'm going with it. Yeah, I thought the Patriots. I wanted to just touch on that real quick because it was like, um, like it's a it was personal because the Patriot, yeah, Belichick. It's it's prime time. There's something <laughs> about like there's no tanking. Like they just that's just not the way it works. You see them arguing with calls in the first quarter of offensive pass interference. He's fully into yeah, it. They definitely cared. So, I think Belichick I will say. One game. Real quick, just off of that, I think a really good just overall picking, like if you get a terrible team on prime time, they usually do get up. Yeah. It's not like an every time thing. But, but. I do want to make the one one thing that you said that I think you do have to, that that has a lot of value at the end of the year is the dome. So they practice inside, they play inside. Like the Texans are never in bad weather. Um, they have a first year coach. So I do think those are a couple good points. I cannot believe what's happened to the Seahawks. Like the see our uh, Justin and I like the Seahawks before the season. Um, they're just up and down. Yeah. Eh. No, that, not as I, much as me. I never made a bet on them. That's All what right. I remember. So, but I know you liked them. I liked them like the first game. I remember and then they're yeah. thirteen and a half. Like this line just it just will keep going. The Niners. Are, it's that high now. Jeez. I see thirteen and a half across. Yeah, that's what it's up to. Um. I, the Seahawks played well enough to win last. Like, I, I think that's just too many points, but I don't know. Go ahead, Mike. What do you think? Um, you know I mean, Se- Seattle is up and down. I feel like at least specifically to this matchup, if you look at the last three or four times, not only San Fran beat Seattle, it's like a complete blowout domination, like 30 point, just nowhere close. 
Right. Um, and the reason I want to say that is because I think like map like matchup styles, like I don't know X's and O's of football, but I think for whatever reason, Shanahan just has Pete Carroll's number. And it's just kind of like, that's why it's got up here. Maybe the spread went up this high with the teaser protection uh, to get it. That's the only thing I could think of. Um, I, d I don't want to take in San Fran against Seattle at every matchup. So I'll probably lay the 13 and a half, but my goodness, is that a lot of points? Yeah. All the metrics favor Seattle. They had the longer, you know, they have the, the whatever they have 10 the, days off. And yeah. yeah, I mean, Seattle should come in with a pretty peak effort. So I'm going to think about that one longer. That's too many points. So I think what we might have is the most, um, I think it's going to be a great game. It might not sound off the top, this Vikings Raiders game. I'm high on both teams. I still think, I still think the Raiders are live. Um, I'm not willing to write them off. They played the Dolphins really tough. Then they had the bye week. Dolphins score 100 points on everybody. They scored 20 against the Raiders. Um, then the Raiders had a bye week. They're getting three at home against the Vikings, but the Vikings are coming off the bye. And they got – and I think um, O'Connell, right, the the uh, coach for the Vikings, I think he does a great job. It seems like the Vikings – you usually judge an offensive coordinator um, based on – these guys are just open. And I think the Vikings scheme well. Um, it's just been a couple bad losses. So I go, I can, I'm having a hard time with this game. I just think it's going to be a really good game. And I think the winner definitely is making the playoffs, even if it's the Raiders. I think the Raiders um, have a soft schedule and they can go on a run, but I don't know if they win this game. So I'm kind of torn. Justin, you have a strong opinion one way or the other on this one? Yeah, uh, semi-strong. I, I like the Raiders getting three, which I think you might have kind of been leaning. Although Jefferson's coming back for Minnesota, but Minnesota's offense has kind of been able to move some games without him. But it's still it's Dobbs versus yeah, like that O'Connell. It's, it's some interesting quarterbacks you never thought you'd kind of see going head to head. Um, but yeah, the Raiders, yeah, they've been playing a lot better. Getting three home against an okay team. Um, I'm usually gonna take that. And uh yeah, be a nice uh Adams versus Jefferson kind of battle. Both of them making a lot of plays, I think. So O'Connell's the Raiders backup quarterback and the Vikings head coach name is O'Connell. I was gonna say yeah, I, if related. I thought you were referencing the was... coach there. <laughs> so I I actually like Ian O'Connell too for the race. I think it's a tough one. So what do you think, Mike? Um, I'm actually in disagreement here. I like um, Minnesota on the road. Um, I think their defense somehow is pretty decent. They can kind of stop the run and put things together. Like coming into the year, it was very lowly rated. I'll say bottom 10, but they're kind of, you know, done enough. And, you know, coming off the bye with Jefferson back, I think it's a huge boost to the offense. I think Dobbs is – kind of efficient enough and you know the Raider quarterback O'Connell um it's fine I, I just feel like their their offense isn't as explosive and it's only a field goal so I like many yeah I feel like Minnesota wins that game by a point or two um tough game Broncos Chargers kind of the same thing feels like an elimination game I'm leaning towards the Chargers um just because I feel like they're in a I think the Broncos are just exhausted it feels like all these Broncos games have been um just I don't know, highly competitive games. They were on the road last week against Houston. That's a really tough game to lose. And that feels like their season um, just ended on that week. And I think they go to Los Angeles. I don't think they'll have as big of a home. Usually the Chargers have to face like the opposing crowd. I don't think there's going to be a ton of Broncos fans there. So it'll feel more like a neutral game. I don't think so. I bet you think it'll be, I mean, Denver's not that far. I bet they yeah, I think Denver. LA. Den it'll, it'll be your classic like 70 30 road team. And, well, I, I think the chart, I don't know if um, I'm usually thinking Herbert's covering his ears because he can't hear. I don't think it'll be that situation. I'm leaning towards <laughs> the Chargers. Justin, sounds like you want to just take the Broncos here. Is that what I'm getting at? But I, I don't know because I don't really like the Broncos either. I don't really, I don't want to pick either team. I don't love them. Um, you got it. I think the Chargers are a little bit better. Um, and so what I would do with under three when, there's a favorite. I'd probably just take the money line, whatever they are. That's what they're going to do. They will not cover that spread. Though. This right. Is a, win it's better than close game. Game. Yeah, probably end up winning by one or two somehow. Uh, so just keep it keep it a little more um, easy on yourself. Do a money line. Uh, yeah, Herbert Wilson has been actually playing pretty well this year um, compared to last year when it was kind of a shit show. He's been, he's been doing some stuff. Um, but, yeah, I'd give a slight nod to the Chargers. Like just to disagree with you guys again, I'm, I'm on Denver. I think these teams are going in two opposite directions. Denver starting out one and five, clearly playing a lot better now with Russ and the defense getting healthier. The Chargers every year are darling and just kind of fall in their face. 
Um, Brandon Staley is going to get fired. It's no matter when, like, what is that team really playing for? I love Denver, especially in a tease, get them up to eight and a half, but money, money line them too. We shall see. Now, Buffalo, Kansas City, got two games. The best two games of, of the day will be the Chiefs and the Bills. Um, I mean, the line, everybody's sophisticated enough here to be like, okay, they're telling me that the Bills is like an even game. Now I'm watching the games, and if I watch the games, I can see that Buffalo is playing at a high level and use, losing these close games. And it feels like the Chiefs aren't, get, aren't getting going. But then it's like, wait, back to what Justin said a few minutes ago, am I going to overthink this and just not take Mahomes on the money line at home? <laughs> um, Michael, I know you have a strong take on it. So what, what do you think? Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm in agreement with the, with the line move and the spread coming down. I, I like Buffalo here. I think it's more of a desperation angle in this exact situation. KC is eight and four. They have the division wrapped up. No one's gonna catch them. Um, Buffalo is literally playing for their lives. They go to six and seven. They're probably out of the playoffs. Um, Buffalo has also engineered their team every year to beat. Kansas City, it's been their kind of target after, you know, the 13 seconds and everything. They even beat them the year after that in Kansas City. So they've done it before. Um, I just think Buffalo, a little bit of desperation. I will say I am afraid of their head coach. Same with the Chargers situation. I think McDermott's kind of lost that locker room, but maybe with the firing of the coordinator, I'm going to parlay that. I know this could fall on its face, but at 35 to 1, I grab Buffalo Super Bowl uh, futures. I think it's a, just a really good grab now to win to win the Super Bowl, to win the AFC. I think they're eighteen to one um, because if they win this game and just somehow get into the playoffs, that's just value because they're going to be closer, you know, much lower than that. Yeah, they get. Um, I know, the, it's bit, know it's a bit of a long shot, but I'm going to take a stand here. Maybe, maybe Buffalo wins this game, goes on a roll. They're, they they're getting health, healthier on defense, and that's what I got. Well, to your point, if they win the next two, because it's Kansas City and then Dallas that 35 will turn into like 15 to one. So if you think they're going to win the next two, it is a good value there. Justin, are we taking Mahomes? at like, you're not betting against Mahomes at home, are you? I am. You I, like, I like, I like Buffalo this game too. At Kansas City. Yeah. You like, it's kind of silly to bet against Mahomes sometimes, but they, they haven't been the same for months. They don't really have a downfield threat that scares you. Kelsey can do some things, but I, yeah, I like Buffalo. Their offense has been humming. This is, I like the desperation angle. This is winner go home for them. Um, I can see Allen making some things happen. And Kansas City, I don't know if they can score enough to keep up. So I'm, I'm taking Buffalo. So the Brad, Eagles. I was just saying one last, one last thing. Casey's down to their third middle linebacker. So they're, they're, they're getting gashed. You saw what Green Bay did. That's going to happen again. So just throwing that out there. I, I, I tell people that, or I should say I used to tell um, a lot of the clients I would have that were wagering, you know, lots of money on the games. I would always ask them before they bet on the game, is it about the entertainment of it or is it about just making money? And I I feel like this Kansas City Buffalo game, if you bet on it, it's going to dictate your feelings. Uh, moving. Like the reason why I won't bet significant money until the playoffs is because I don't want to be, I don't want to get emotional. And I feel like if you bet on this game or this next game, the Eagles Cowboys, and you lose or you win, it can affect how you're going to bet the game in the playoffs. So just a reminder, if you have a strong, you don't have to necessarily um, think that the team that's going to win this week is necessarily going to win the following week or even make the playoffs. It is a week-by-week situation. So I I say that all of that to say that everything probably points towards Buffalo, but I could not pull the trigger as far as wagering money against the Chiefs at home. Uh, so we shall see. Usually, though, when you say something like that, that's like if that's your only like argument is like, I just don't want to bet against the guy at home. That's not the best. Um, Eagles, Cowboys. Uh, it feels like more people are taking the Cowboys, um, even though it's minus three and a half in most places. Three and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do not like the Cowboys at all. I've been saying that all year, but I do acknowledge it this is like a really tough spot for Philadelphia. Um, I do think though, and then I'll set up like this, that Philadelphia getting blown out is not exactly what Dallas wanted. I think maybe losing by 10 would have been better. So I got to just watch this game, just like the bills and the chiefs. And then I'll, I think I'll have a stronger opinion after I actually see these games with these teams, but um, Justin, why don't you start Eagles, Cowboys? Uh, what we got? Uh, yeah. In this game, I'm kind of just, it's, it's a tough game, but I'm boiling it down to the basics. I, who, who do I think is a better team? I think it's Dallas. Pretty clearly right now, Philly's really struggling on defense. I mean, they're, Philly's still a good, a good team. They're going to 
they could win a game or two in the playoffs still, but their defense is, yeah, like I said, really struggling. They, I was hearing something on the radio. They really don't disguise any coverages they do on defense. <laughs> Dallas is the type of team, especially Dak Prescott, can uh, really come out of the huddle, see what's kind of happening, has 20 seconds to prepare, and he's got a lot of weapons that he can, he can really take advantage of. I can see Dallas scoring a lot again. Um, they've been they've been ridiculous at home. Um, could go to the road divisional angle, getting three and a half with Philly. I could I could see it, but I'm just kind of keeping it simple, going with the better team to, to Dallas. Mike, I'm with you, Joss. I'm I'm on the Cowboys here. I think Philly's defense it's it is injury based, but they're just not close to where they've been. Their offense isn't close to what what they've been compared to last year. Dallas is throwing the ball at an insane level. They're up. 30 points and still throwing them on first and second down, which is exactly what you want to see, especially when you're laying points. The home team usually wins in this um, matchup three, four, or five times going back. So give me the Cowboys. Dallas yeah. also wants revenge from the first game. As soon as you said that um, about throwing them first and second down, I think it was Warren Sharp who just ripped the Steelers the other night. Because the Steelers yeah. they love Tomlin. I, I like I find myself like every time Tomlin's calling these games, you're watching the Steelers, I'm like, just thinking about Raven Steelers 08, 09, 2010, 2011. Those last like three or four years before all the rules changes. And Tom was just stuck there. He's like, this is the way we're playing football no matter <laughs> what. And it's like every – you know the it. ball. If it's like if it's second and ten, he 100% Wrong. wants to be third and seven. <laughs> and nobody's telling him. It's like, dude, third and seven is like a nightmare in the NFL. And he's just oh, like, it's... we'll just punt it and we'll be fine. <laughs> it's It's – oh, my God. That, uh, losing that game, I haven't had more fun just watching awesome. the game. Yeah, that oh, was, yeah, it's awesome. Like yeah, Steelers games for most people, they're like embarrassing. They're they're not good football. Yada yada. For us watching it, it's pretty entertaining and humorous. Seeing them just struggle like crazy. They don't you they know don't have an identity I, or anything. But I can almost guarantee that last week of the season, it'll be Steelers beat Ravens, and then they're in the playoffs somehow. And we'll be watching the game. It'll be nine to seven. At some point, like he'll get, yeah, mm-hmm. he'll get us to play the game. All right, so before we go, um, I purposely only left a minute. Now you guys got to run. Um, Ravens, Rams, give it to me in like twenty seconds. What do we think, Justin? Let me let, let me let me say real quick because I got a good good snippet from the press conferences. Um, it's going to be like I said, bad weather, rainy, maybe windy. Harbaugh has said in his press conferences, we're preparing for it. We got wet balls. We're doing things. Rams coming over. Haven't seen Verd Von from McVeigh or um, the Rams. So we were a good bet anyway. We run the ball. We're physical. It plays to our style, but just tease us, bet us. We're we're a good side. Justin, words of caution or Ravens? Not not really words of caution. I mean, the only thing that slightly worries me, and it's kind of a dumb angle, it's just off the bye. Even though Harbaugh has been really good off the buys, you just never know how that one week of time off not playing football kind of affects the team. But yeah, either way, still, I, I like the Ravens. I, I teased us and took us at minus seven. Um, yeah, I, I think they're, they are they like to pass the ball a lot. I mean, though Williams has been running it well for them. Um, I don't think that's this is kind of going to be the kind of game that, that Puka and, and Cup have really big games. And our, and our secondary has been holding down uh, team's top weapons also. Um, and then, yeah, we should be able to ground and pound a little bit, kind of control the clock, hopefully, and uh, create some turnovers on the defensive side. Um, I like us pretty comfortably. And Lamar also dominates the NFC. Sweet. All right, I'll let you guys roll. We'll get the picks out, and uh, everybody have a great day. Yeah, thanks, See guys. See you soon. See you.